Hi everyone, this is me guy that does everything back with another repair video and this time I will be trying to repair an EVGA 650 watt power supply which is sent to me by a member of Pakistani PC gamers who unfortunately got this issue in his power supply. So I'll be taking a deeper look at it and we'll also be showing you guys all the troubleshooting techniques that can be really helpful in figuring out the exact problem in any power supply. Alright, so now that the power supply is out of the box, it's time to start the troubleshooting steps without even tearing down the PSU. So the very first troubleshooting step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually turn it on to see the current status of this PSU, like how does it actually react when I turn it on. So in order to manually turn on any PSU, you just need to short out green and black wire either with a paper clip or with a piece of wire. And there you go. As you can see that the power supply is turning on for just a second and then shutting itself off back again. And in order to find out what exactly is happening in this power supply, I've made this very brief and rough sketch of how a power supply actually works so that you can easily understand where exactly do we have the problem in this power supply. So the first part is where our mains 220 volts AC comes in and then it gets converted to 320 to 400 volts DC. Now this DC then powers 5 volt standby transformer that provides 5 volts to supervisor IC and this IC sends the signal to a PWM controller which then turns on the secondary side transformer where we get our 12, 5 and 3.3 volts power rails. Now supervisor IC is one of the most important safety feature design in every power supply because it first makes sure that everything is working fine, every voltage is under the limit and then it sends power OK signal to our motherboard so that it can turn on. And now if we get back to our power supply, it was turning on just for a second. That can mean that our supervisor IC is actually detecting some fault on the secondary side and that is why it's immediately shutting off the PSU. Now this boring theory has suddenly started to make sense, right? So this simply means that our primary side is actually working fine. We only have problem in our secondary side. So now I'm gonna open up the power supply and I'm gonna see if there is any short or component failure on the secondary side. But before opening up this PSU, let me first warn you guys, every PSU has got a bulk capacitor inside that remains charged for up to 200 volts or more even when you disconnect the power. So this can be quite lethal and dangerous, so make sure you disconnect the power for at least an hour before opening it up. Alright, so here is our secondary side and I'm gonna do the visual inspection first to see if there is any blown up IC or capacitor. So I actually can't find any problem here visually, I'm now gonna flip over the PCB and then we'll check if there is any short or component failure on the back using a multimeter. So before going any further, let me first show you guys how many volts do we actually have in this power supply's bulk capacitor. One hundred and sixty-five volts! Well that's shocking, like quite literally because it still can give you quite some shock. So I'm just gonna discharge this capacitor using a 47k ohm resistor. Thank you. 
Alright, so now I have set my multimeter on continuity mode and I'm just checking for any short MOSFETs or capacitors. Well, nothing seems to be short here. Everything looks just fine. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What do we have here? Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. It's actually a blown up 10 ohm resistor. Let's see where it's connected to. So it's connected to an FSP6601 PWM or a controller IC that switches the secondary transformer. And unfortunately, FSP, which is a power supply manufacturer, they don't provide datasheet of their specific ICs publicly, so I just have to try my luck by replacing the resistor and hope that the PSU will work just fine. Now finding SMD components or SMD resistors can be quite difficult here, but fortunately I actually found a 10 ohm resistor on an old Nvidia Quadro GPU. So I'm gonna desolder it from this GPU and then we'll solder it in place of that blown up resistor. And it's always a good practice to use hot air station if you're working with SMD components, but because I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use my good old soldering iron. Alright, so I've replaced the resistor and now comes the moment that we have all been waiting for. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna blow up? Let's power it up and see what happens. Well, there you go. It's actually not turning off now. It just keeps on running. Yeah, we fixed it guys. We have fixed the power supply. Another successful repair. We did it. That, that really feels good, doesn't it? So that was just a f***ing blown up resistor that was causing all this problem. And now let's just see if we're getting all the required voltages out of it. Twelve volt is fine. Five volt is fine. And lastly, 3.3 volts. Yep, all the voltage rails are working fine. Another successful and quite interesting repair, I must say. Alright, so that's it. I hope that you're gonna appreciate the effort and hard work that actually went into making of this video. So if you think I deserve your like and subscription, then go ahead, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you with the next one. Bye.